What's happening guys? We're back and I want to get going on the upper control arm mounts today. Alright, we got a bit of time in the shop today. Uh, so I want to get the, uh, the mounts made for the upper control arms. Uh, we got the lowers done there last episode, so this is kind of the logical next step. Uh, this is a bit of a situation where a bit of foresight or a little bit of pre-planning would have been uh, would have saved me some time, because these uprights in the chassis are 12 inches apart, but our hind joints on our upper control arms are 11 and a half inches apart. So on the bottom, or sorry, on the front ones. We can just weld our mounting tabs right on either side of this and that'll give us that one inch gap between them. On the rear, we gotta do something different because it's set forward half an inch. So we're not able to, to just make straight tabs, weld it on either side. Um, so we're gonna have to figure something out for that, but we'll leave that for later. The front one should be pretty easy. Same process as the bottoms. Draw out a cardboard template and then uh, make it out of steel. So because it's easy, that's where we're gonna start. So there's our rough cut for the uh, the front two brackets. Um, because the top of the chassis is tapered, each each bracket is going to be different. So we can only do two at a time, one for the left and one for the right. But I was looking at these, and these are going to be pretty big. I mean, however they stick out, they're going to stick out quite a ways from the car. So I figured we should make these kind of pretty and put a couple of dimple dies in them. Uh, I have I have a set of dimplers, uh, so I cut a test piece to make sure that uh, that it would work because this is a pretty thick material. Um, unfortunately, uh, the only thing that I have to to you know do the actual pressing with these is my vise, which is a cheap little Canadian tire vise. And when I really kind of threw a snipe on the the handle and put the beans to it. I ended up bending the handle. So I need a press to do these. So I think tomorrow I'm gonna run over to my dad's place. He's got a 12 ton press and we'll dimple dye this test piece to make sure that there's not too much warpage or anything in the actual, uh, in the actual tab before we cut those out. Because I found when you're dimple dyeing stuff, uh, if it's a thin piece like this, it'll tend to pull in, pull the edges in really, really hard, and then you get a really wavy edge. So if you can leave it as a, as a large plate and do your dimpling first before you cut them out, it's, uh, it works quite a bit better. So I'm gonna test that tomorrow, and if it works, then we can drill this out and dimple this piece before we cut these tabs out and finish them. If that doesn't work, we'll just cut these out and probably drill a couple of beauty holes in it and uh, call it good enough. So we can't do anything more on these until I test the, the dimple die. So we'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. And we're back. Uh, I went over and tested out the dimple dying, like I said I would. Uh, it didn't work very well. It, uh, it really deforms this plate because it's so thick. So we're not gonna be able to dimple die our tabs. So we're gonna have, we're, I think what we'll do is we'll just leave these guys solid and then when we come to box them in, we're gonna box them in with something quite a bit thinner. Um, probably something like this. And the dimple dies actually work really well in this piece. So we'll just use this for our, our boxing in and then we can throw some dimples in that and it'll look cool. So we're not gonna dimple die our uh, suspension tabs, but not a big deal because we have to remake these anyhow. So I got to thinking last night about these. 
when we measured these out, we just measured right to the edge of this upright, not really thinking that our tabs have to get welded onto the face of this upright, not onto the corner. So rather than being mounted like this, they actually have to get mounted like this. So these legs of this tab need to be an extra inch long. So we're not gonna be able to cut these guys out. We're gonna have to redo it. So today, let's grab a piece of cardboard and remake our template. Uh, that should be pretty quick. We're just gonna take this template and basically just add an inch on the end of it and, uh, and then trace out a couple more tabs and cut them out of the big sheet and get back to work. All right, so there's our four tabs rough cut out. Um, we are gonna make the front and rear tabs of that front mount slightly differently, but the outside contour and the kind of the inside hole that I haven't cut out yet, they're gonna be identical across all four tabs for the front mount. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack all four of these plates together and shape those contours and cut this inner one out as a, as a full set so that uh, they're all the same. And then we'll have to cut them apart and, uh, and just weld them together in pairs and then do you know the front and rear ones separately for the, because the ends of the tabs are gonna be slightly different. The rear ones have to get notched and the front ones have to have an overhang. So let's clamp all four of these together. We'll throw a couple of light little welds across them and then uh, get to shaping them. quick before we do the final shaping of these and the, the cutting of the interior pieces. Um, I'm going to drill the, the half inch through hole for the heim. That's the main piece that has to stay concentric. So once we have that then we can bolt all four of these together and kind of grind off the edge welds and it'll all stay together. So to the drill press. We got the uh, the interior kind of chunk cut out of there. Uh, I took and drilled half inch holes in the corners so that I could just jigsaw my way in between them. Uh, it also gives me a nice kind of radius on the inside corners. Uh, you want that, you want a radius on any interior corner uh, or else you end up, if you got a sharp one, you end up with a stress riser right there and then it'll crack. Uh, if you look at like uh, the windows on airplanes, they're always a, a rounded corner, so you don't get those stress risers. So I did that. Uh, the next step is gonna be finishing the exterior profile and uh, smoothing that all out before we split these off into their pairs for the front and rear mounts. But I'm gonna have to do that tomorrow, so I'll catch up with you guys then. And we're back. Uh, I came out this morning and did the final exterior sanding on these. 
So the outer profile is good, the inner profile is good. Um, all we gotta do now is split them into pairs. I got four of them here, I need to split them off into two sets so that we can do the final shaping for the fronts and the rears separately because the rear has gotta, uh, gotta be notched to go around that top tube. So we'll do that, do the final shaping on them, and then we should be ready to weld them onto the car. So let's do it. There's all four of our brackets all made. Uh, I took and kind of knocked all the corners off and shaped these rear ones. They kind of look a little funny because I had to cut the top off of them. But they're all ready to go, so let's bolt them onto that template and then we can uh, tack them onto the car. pretty good um, we're obviously gonna box these in because they do stick out quite far and there'll be a little bit of front to back movement in them but we'll wait to do the boxing in and probably the final welding until we bolt the arms in so that they don't shift at all but uh, I like them so that's what we're gonna call the episode this week you guys uh, thank you so much for watching next week we'll probably get moving on the the rear mounts for the upper A-arm, and then we'll have the whole front suspension ready to go in. So, if you haven't already, hit the like and subscribe button, go check us out on Instagram, Left Foot First Media, and we'll see you next episode. I'm out of here.